Hello everyone, Bishi here, and welcome to another demo sneak peek of Women of Zhao, a political visual novel. This is by Project Trinity team. They're right now on Kickstarter trying to raise funds. They only have 28 days to go. So please, after you watch this, please take a look at their pages. All the links are in the description. Um, this is said to have over 50k worth of dialogue. There's voice acted areas, animated backgrounds, at least five male and female romance options, start and relationships on a whim, a morality system, three main endings, and at least two secret endings. So I'm kind of excited as to where this is going to go. So we're going to get right onto it. I think there's voice acting for this too, so maybe my throat can take a break. <laughs> This demo presents Women of Zhao in its earlier stages. It is not representative of the final project. September 30th, 2020. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. This is your captain speaking, and we are currently flying through the liquor skies. If you all look out your windows, you'll notice that despite yesterday's storm, the clouds have mostly stabilized. Expect a smooth ride for the duration of the trip. We will be arriving in Zanaska in 30 hours. So, if you would like something to eat or drink in the meantime, please ask one of my lovely attendants for refreshments. For our travelers from Earth, Zao welcomes you. Episode Zero. Whoa, I am sold already. Did you see that? That was amazing. That was just so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just struck. I've that opening, and then there was voice acting, and I'm what? Okay, usually in demos, there's no voice acting, so I'm just like, what? Okay, sorry. I was a little starstruck there. Okay. That was the first thing you heard after waking up. You dozed off again, spending way too long dreaming about apple pie. When you woke up again, you felt as if you had slept longer than perhaps desired. Wanting to stretch your legs from the long, long ride, you walked up and down the aisle, hoping to shake off the boredom. Everybody on board understood. In fact, you're pretty sure many were on the brink of giving firm, supportive nods. Hello, gentlemen and ladies. This is your captain speaking. And I just want to thank everyone here once again for their patience. Our 124-hour flight is nearing its end, and we couldn't have asked for better passengers. And now, a word from one of our new sponsors. There's no stopping it. Earth's technology is coming to Zao. The market is ready, but are you? Join Eva Stocks today and be part of the revolutionary era shared between worlds. On your way back to your seat, you notice on your left a girl with asymmetrical hair looking out of her window. Her, f her following sigh was brief, but told you all you needed to know. Leave her alone. Wow, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm loving this so far. <laughs> the voice acting is just, wow. Okay, pretty sight. Oh, you can talk to her, okay. Um, sit down next to her. I can assure you that I'm more interesting than whatever you're looking. Okay. Okay, so we're going for a, an egotistical. Okay, I'm going to say small talk. Let's just small talk. Pretty sight, isn't it? Hey there. It is. Though I wish I could appreciate a, a bit more than I do. That kind of day, huh? Afraid so. Sometimes I let my thoughts wander for too long. And then I find myself just not into it, you know? Oh my god, 
these. I love this. So many dialogue choices. Wow. Okay. I, uh, whatever it is. No. No, I do not know. I take it you're thinking about all the terrible things in life and it's messing you up. It almost sounds like you're trying to achieve something. But your thorns are much. Okay. Uh, let's go with. It almost sounds like you're trying to achieve something, but your thoughts aren't much help today. Yeah, that sounds mellow. Mmm. A little here. A little there. It's complicated. Well, you still have my ears. Seems like I do. Name's Velvet, and thanks. I think I need to vent to someone. It's no problem. Call me Zaina? Is that how you say it? I hope I'm saying it right. Zaina. I like that name. Zaina. So, what's eating ya? Oh, I love that. It's just, I want so much more out of society. It's no good for us as it is now. This morning, just before I got on this airship, I actually beat a woman until she wasn't moving anymore. Not even breathing. We were both lucky I came to my senses before she suffered a worse fate. Lawfully speaking, I was justified. She was being a provocative asshole, and no court would argue otherwise. But my Zala? I felt it drowning me with guilt the more I punched the woman. If I had used it to summon a weapon, the aura would have been purple. Felt that bad, huh? I love that there's multiple dialogue choices. I just love that in games. You nearly killed a woman over words? If it was me, I would have let my Zala go red and just beat her until she was... Well, that's not very nice. Hmm. Let's... Felt that bad, huh? Well, okay. I think the first one. Yeah. She caught me when my mood was just starting to get horrible, but... She didn't deserve that. Maybe not, but that does not- but that does beg the question of why she started shit in the first place. Stupid people will always be stupid. Seldom will you find a law preventing that. That's why I accepted Lady Zuna's invitation. The way things are now, I think... It brings the worst out of me. The worst out of everyone. I never want to come close to crossing that line again. If I can prove myself worthy of Lady Zuna's seat, I can be right there on the ground floor, changing laws, making society better, safer. Maybe then, I can push myself to be the person I want to be. You think the other lawmakers would let you pass such bills? That's optimistic? I know. Naive. Naive was the word I was like. You know what? You have my support. Aw, thanks. I feel like I'll need it during our stay at Lady Zuna's estate. Figured out I was headed there too, huh? Signs were dropping left and right. But tell me, if you get Lady Zuna's position and become matriarch, what will you do with it? Hmm. Basking my newfound fame and fortune? Try to improve society too, honestly. Don't know. I just want to get there first. <laughs> it's all about them boys. No, try to improve society too. I'm really happy to hear that. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only girl who wants things to change. I understand. Some things about Zal are so much better than Earth. But then there's that whole other side to this planet. We'll get there. Probably before Earth fixes all of its basic shit. Lots of spirit. Thanks for coming by and letting me talk this out with you. No problem. We'll talk later, I'm sure. Until then, may the best girl win. You gave her a firm nod. May the best woman win. I, I don't know what voice to go with my main character. <laughs> you walked back to your seat and decided to sleep the rest of the way to Zanaska. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. We have at last arrived in Zanaska. 
As thanks for flying with us, we'll be offering Dragoons to ride to anywhere within the city, free of charge, courtesy of Manaska's Dragoon Farm. As a reminder, if you are carrying luggage and choose to ride as Dragoon, please keep your belongings in a secure position, because once it falls into the sky, you're sort of not getting it back. <laughs> if you are a human male, please remain close to your designated Zolian host as we cannot guarantee your well-being if you stray too far from her. Please make your way to the exit in an orderly fashion. And as always, thank you for choosing Zula Airships. Zuna's Manor. Yeah, I'm loving this so far. I just don't know what voice to use for my voice. <sighs> You left the airship, shortly tossing on your hat and parting ways with Velvet afterwards. Seeing the outside of Zuna's manor for the first time opens a world of curiosities. But the fear of being late to your first day as her apprentice pushes you to rush inside and find her office. Or at least you would have if not for hearing the sounds of a giant beast landing behind you. <laughs> Stop to peek or keep going? Well, I'm adventurous. Let's stop to peek. Unless this kills me. Well, here goes nothing. Aww. When you turned your head back, you noticed a Zragoon. It had landed nearby and closed its eyes right away. Who did it belong to? Would it bite your hand off if you tried to pet it? Temptation and curiosity slipped by as you tore your attention away to get to Lady Zuna's office. Hmm. That's a cute Zuragoon. Ooh, who's that? You enter Zuna's office and see that four other women are already inside waiting. The regal glare of the eldest woman sitting behind the room's desk gave away her identity immediately, but the other three were standing a few feet away from Zuna and forming a loose, horizontal line across the room. The first girl kept a calm yet distant gaze on you. It seemed she she wasn't even close to saying hello. The second girl appeared less focused on analyzing you and seemed content to look away after seeing your face. The third woman, at the very least, gave you a comforting, albeit immeasurably confident nod. Hey. Oh, okay. Um, smile and nod before falling along with the lip, hey, and try to give her just as confident of a head nod. You can all leave now. Your heiress is here. Oh, man. My next playthrough, I just gotta be all. <laughs> you can leave now. Okay, I'm gonna smile and nod because I want to be nice. The gaze of the younger women returned to the front, but the one behind the desk never stopped staring at you and the rest of the girls down. Not even for a second. Afternoon, ladies. You watch Velvet walk to your side and give the woman in front a firm nod. Lady Zuna. The woman hardly acknowledged Velvet. If you had blinked, you wouldn't have seen the slight nodding motion of her head. Then, without anyone really being prepared, she stood from her chair with her hands planted on her desk and eyes no less observant. Let's begin. Whoa, she's really pretty. Okay. I've waited long enough. It's high time we discussed your future here at my estate. Welcome to my establishment. I am Matriarch Zuna, Zaviant. For generations, my family has both raised and sustained this city. Many of Zal's past and brightest... Oh, best, sorry. Many of Zal's best and brightest stem from the roots of my family's social, political, and economical reach. As such, the position of matriarch must be more than playing the gluttonous playgirl. It must be more than the brothels and the riches. You must be willing to make sacrifices you may have never dreamed of. To prepare you all for this, I have made arrangements prior to your arrival. Until year's end, each of you will receive a city pass. You will be allowed to attend a course on Zulian and inter-universal policies and laws at Seneska University, attend government meetings, receive military training, and a variety of other activities. 
You are free to pick and choose when and if you participate in one pastime or the other. However, by the end of the year, I will, without hesitation, choose the most qualified amongst you. Pace yourselves accordingly. If you are an infectual politician, you're out. If you fail to become a competent warrior, <laughs> you're out. If you prove to be a poor businesswoman, you're out. If you're too naive or ill-educated to be here, you're out. Any questions? Uh, wow. I like her already. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that. I like her already. Um, I like her outfit, actually. I want to wear that. Um, any rules regarding how we conduct ourselves? Does inter-universal mean we have to talk to humans? What are the, <laughs> what are the rules regarding the brothel boys? Okay, yeah, let's say that. No, we don't want to act stupid in front of this lady. <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of want to know. <laughs> any rules regarding how we conduct ourselves? <sighs> resist, resist the third choice. Yeah, let's... What does this mean? Am I not human? I'm afraid so. That includes the Earthlings. Really? Oh, oh God. God. Wonderful. You all took it about as well as to be expected. So I guess we're not Earthlings. Okay. Phew. Am I late? Did I miss anything important? Ooh. I like her, she's cute looking too. Don't worry, you only missed everything. Ah. Uh, yeah, let's, uh. <laughs> Don't worry, you only missed everything. Yeah, let's go with that. Damn it! I'm sorry, everyone. I ran into a little trouble getting here. You didn't miss much, but in the future, I highly suggest you make sure to never remind me of this particular moment again. Can do. I will brief you on the details later. And since every candidate is finally here, you can all introduce yourselves properly. Zuna ported towards the girl furthest left. Start with you and continue in a line. My name is Marexa Morley. Pleasure to meet you all. Noxia Vexus. You can just call me by my last name, Jenna. Velvet Curiax. Good luck, everyone. Clannis Zamori. Aze Quinn. No doubt you all still have questions. However, I must return to these documents regarding the humans from Earth wanting to visit Zale. If things go smoothly, some of you may be giving the aliens a grand tour of Zanaska. If you have any general questions, Dr. Joy will be happy to answer them for you. Is... that's a guy, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm just like... Hello, ladies. Everyone flinched. No one heard him come in. My name is Dr. Clint Seath and Joy. Since I am your in-house doctor, Please never hesitate to stop on by my office, if you need a checkup, or if you have any inquiries I can answer. You'll be able to find me immediately left on the manor's entrance. I must confess I'm a bit infamous for my rantings about Zulian and human biology, but please, don't let that deter you. My patients seldom seem to mind. Wow, he's really cute. I like his eyes. Um, I'm just gonna dot 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 that. Thank you, Joy. You are dismissed. With a prompt nod and practice stepped, he pivoted and walked away as quickly as he entered. Lastly, my chefs cook dinner at 8.30 every day, so if you wish to eat fresh food, be in the dining room by then. This concludes the meeting. Dismissed. Your first official meeting with Zuna has concluded. 
You still have some time before dinner. Where do you want to go? Oh. Yes, please, let's go visit Dr. Joy. Hello, my lady. I must confess, I wasn't expecting to see you so soon. What can I do for you today? Uh, what do you think? Of, why would I ask him that? Never in a smith or <laughs> Yes. Do it. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of thirst for knowledge. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just... Come on. <laughs> First choice. I'm here to serve. Please, have a seat. I like that. Oh, wow, look. He closed his eyes as he sat down on the nearby bed and let his hands touch the right side of your neck. After nearly half a minute, he opened his eyes again and moved back to his prior position. I am pleased to announce your body is in perfect health. Your Zala should give you no trouble summoning items or protecting your body from outside forces. Please, come by tomorrow if you need another checkup. What can I do for you today? Let's go with the third choice. <laughs> You're a cute one. I'm afraid we don't have the time to indulge in all the knowledge of your desire today, but I'll do what I can. What can I do for you today? <laughs> Alright, I'll leave. I just came here to just see your pretty face. Okay, bye. Very well. It was a pleasure seeing you again. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was me fangirling for a minute. Okay, um... Uh, let's go to... Uh, who is this girl again? I forgot. Ooh, I think that was the girl that was nice to us. Let's go to her room. The story progresses once you head to your room. Are you sure you want to continue? No, no. Okay, let's go to the garden. Oh, hello. You're new. The garden is under maintenance until further notice. Take a walk. Oops, sorry. Oh, she, she was being rude. <laughs> I, I thought she wanted me to take a walk with her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's continue. Yes. Yes, please. One of Zuna's escorts led you to your room and gave a small, submissive bow before he pardoned himself from your presence. Upon examining your room, you were quick to notice how overwhelmingly spacious it is. You wonder if you'll ever fill the entire room with your belongings. I was expecting a nice place, but I can see I'll be needing to find me a roommate. Finally, one step closer to my... <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> well, it is a demo, so I could just be like, Rrr, rrr, rrr. I could be evil. <laughs> you turned your head back towards the door. Who could possibly be at the door? Oh, Zenjin's me, derp. Hey. Hello. Uh. Hey, may I help you? Hate to be one that bothers you, but someone asked a few of us guys to see what you new girls were like. I'm on break, so I figured, why not? And they didn't want to come here themselves? Um. Culliver. Jenna. And no, he didn't. The dainty shit isn't the most direct fellow, but it's whatever. Did you have to call him that? What? A shit? Well, once you get to know him, you'll have your own little inventive name for him. Um... Yeah, first one. <laughs> Culliver fought away the smallest grins. I'll be sure to relay the message. Thanks. I'll let you be on your way. Hope we bump into each other again, though. In this establishment? I'm afraid we will. Later. He walked away without turning back. Despite the curt and seemingly useless conversation, he smirked as he closed the door again. He looked at your bed one more time before deciding to drop in it to nap until dinner.
Lady Jenna, your dinner will be served soon. You opened your eyes and stared around your surroundings, still fighting sleep. Heck yeah, stay in bed. <laughs> oh yeah, let's do that. Oh my god, it lets you stay in bed. <laughs> More knocking? Well, it was a good five minute nap. You open the door, half expecting to see Culliver again. Hey. I thought I'd find you catching a few more minutes of sleep. <laughs> I'm just gonna be mean from now on. Whoops, my apologies. I didn't know you were so easily prone to being an ass. Oops. <laughs> Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. No, but I imagine you knew I wasn't the type to appreciate a comment all the same. Actually, I don't even know you. Fair play. So, what can I help you with? I wanted to ask you about the garden behind the estate. I'm afraid I haven't been there yet. <sighs> I see. Dash, damn it. Alright, that's fine. Mind if I come back around 24 hours from now? I'm assuming you'll visit the garden by then? I can't see why I wouldn't. Good. I'll see you then. Wait, what? Noxia walked away, leaving you to contemplate her words. No one at the state seemed bother about the garden, so what could have drove Noxia to your door? However, you couldn't think on it for too long, for dinner was ready and waiting. You left your room and headed towards the dining room. By the time he walked into the dining room, all of the candidates were there being served their food. Zuna was nowhere nearby, but several males were standing submissively along the walls to your left. They kept their hands clasped, right over left, lowered in front of their thighs. Their gazes remained fixated on the floor in front of them in order to provide a comfortable eating environment. You pulled out the chair closest to you on your left. Tonight's dinner was steak. You've seen it advertised on Earth before, heavily but your taste buds were trapped in a vicious loop between bacon and pizza while on Earth. But now was your chance to try out some of the planet's finer meals. Its aroma was both undeniably alien and tantalizing. You signaled one of the servant boys to bring you an extra glass of purified Zella, wasting no time drinking it all. It tasted just like Earthling's water, but this particular glass seemed to encourage drowsiness. A good minute went with you and the other girls enjoying steak for the first time in your lives. Earth was many, many, many things, but being horrible at creating fine recipes was not one of them. Good Taj Almighty, this is going to be a favorite dish of mine, I just know it. In fact, I might just call this my favorite place, period. It's huge. I knew it had to be because it doubles as a home, but damn! And I see you found the closet. Ha <laughs> ha! Very funny. Today was bullshit for me from beginning to end, but it's starting to look up. I am curious about your story, actually. How you ended up having to rent a Zragoon and attending one of the most important business meetings of your life in everyday attire. Yes, tell us your story. <laughs> Probably rented a whore for a little what? Let's just be nice. Aw, thanks. Aw, you're welcome. That's legitimately the only compliment I've gotten today. Figures it'd be on the least appropriate thing in the estate, right? But yeah. I was neck deep into a heavy cloud storm, and the maintenance girl wasn't going to get to my place until it was way too late. So, needless to say, I had to use my own Zala to create a makeshift barrier around my home, right? But then I sort of <laughs> laid down. Oh no. Yeah. I fell right asleep with my Zala, keeping the barrier up far after the storm had passed. So you slept through the alarm because of how tired you were? Yep. Pro tip, don't abuse your magical powers. But wait, doesn't your city have filters and barriers in place to prevent such an issue? 
I mean, I assumed you lived in one of those giant islands. And I do! But one of the new electricians screwed up the wiring and, well, she ended up knocking down the city's defenses. whoop de doo Wow, I hope she wasn't attached to her job. The poor girl will probably be real- Sorry. The poor girl will probably be relocated until she can properly handle the bigger tasks. Or never. Goodness. I hope no one was hurt. Not at all. General Zulfia was in town, so, uh... Oh, yeah. Nothing bad happened. She's divine like that. But damn do I hate how strong she is. I don't. Her Zala gives me life. Well, look at you, all fired up for the egomaniac. And here I thought you were just going to stay quiet over there. I mean... I... well... Oh no. Don't tell me. Noxia. Do you have... Do you have a crush on the fourth general of Zal? What? N no Why even ask such an out-of-nowhere question anyways? Oh, sorry. Your Zala just sold you out. See now, if Noxia was human, she'd be able to finish that little slice of denial. Hold up. Humans can lie? Yeah, but their mana flares up and goes pink whenever they do. They can't see it, but it's hilarious whenever they defend the lie to the soul. Ha! What a useless ability. You know, I haven't gotten a chance to really sit down to get to know enough humans to judge, but I've heard stories. Actually, while I was visiting Earth, I inevitably had to ask my guide what homophobia was. And do you know what she told me? Gonna tell us what the word means for- Don't ask. The important thing is, when I did, she told me that I was a cinnamon roll that must be protected. And then she told me what it meant. Zell's a good place, girls. Such a damn good place. Are humans really that bad? Because you're kind of making them seem shifty as hell right now. Um... <laughs> so there's this book called Twilight. Let's do it. Because you felt you needed to ruin everyone's dinner, you told them to tell of Bella and Edward. <laughs> Aksay? Noxia, and Marix, Mar Marixa, Mar Marixa, I think that's her name, were put off the moment you got past them, telling them about page one, book one. Velvet and Clannis remained very cautiously optimistic. But then you got to the part where Bella fell in love. Please, no more. I didn't ask for this. You kept going anyways. You told them about Edward's Romantic lines. I thought publishers were supposed to pick the best of the best. I'm actually laughing to keep myself from crying. You told them about the book's glorification of abstinence in context to Bella's situation. Uh, what? Uh, wonderful. Um, no. That was evidently the breaking point. Everyone lost their shit. You feel proud disgusting whom you could have called friends in such a vicious manner. You shouldn't, but you do. Love it. Finally, you were able to get to the end of the story. But at what cost? I feel my innocence slipping away. Please, please, tell us that you are just fucking with us. Tell us that the book Twilight isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Well>, how? <laughs> Same reason our young boys like like that dumb Cloudway book. Harmless, but ultimately annoying to hear them prattle on about it. Oh right! I got like five pages into that piece of garbage, put it down, and never looked back. Good life choices, Clannis. Something. Sh I forgot how to say it. Jenna. Yeah, okay. Something Jenna should have done back on Earth. Hey, at least you didn't actually read or watch it. Still, it's tiring just thinking about it. Let's move, let's move on, yeah? Here, here. <sighs> no, you did bring it up. 
<laughs> Love it. Everyone finished their meal around the same time with only your drinks remaining. You determined that steak was an odd alien meat that you'll have to have again very soon. Goodness, give it up for the Earthlings. Their mannerisms are shit, but their aesthetics, quality. Ever visit Earth or Accelerando, Clannis? You seem very familiar with humans. Oh no, 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 no. My mom works in General Zula's science branch, so we get access to all the technology our government wants to integrate into society. Earthlings and their internet? Definitely one of them. My house is linked to one of Earth's satellites, so I can Google and YouTube as much as I want. And Red Tube. What tube? YouTube. That's how I learned about humans. Okay, but do you want to tell those girls? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> right. You've toured Earth. Yep. And trust that if I had not heard of Red Tube by now, I'd be too naive to be here. So what is it? It's just a place where humans upload their sex lives for all to see. Oh, and here I thought it was something interesting. Like secret war footage or something. No, but you could probably find that in other places. This internet sounds amazing. Coming soon to Zal. I'm getting this sneaking feeling Lady Zuna already has access to it. I'd imagine so. She's in the top five for most successful brothels. And she only has three. And that's because she's very good at picking odd men and marketing them very well. Makes me kind of want to meet her marketing team. Bah! Her marketing always looked too expensive to me. Like it's telling people that we can't afford, afford her goods. That's not how you sell your product. Nope. What you want to do is make it less artsy and far more carnal. Something that says, we relate to you, and want you to come. We're waiting! Not that out of your reach nonsense. You are aware that you're critiquing a company that banks so much income that your opinion means shit, right? Don't be thick. We're all here because Lady Zuna, for whatever reason, doesn't want a daughter and plans on stepping down soon. That means our thoughts on marketing her product matter. It makes no difference if you don't like my ideas, Marixia. Oh, this turned bad quick. Back to calming down and enjoying the night. Hey, you know what would lighten the mood? Bringing in something easy on the eyes. Clannis looked over to one of the young men standing near the wall to across her. You there. Yes. Well, obviously, come here. Clannis motioned her finger for the boy to approach her. The men next to the young boy didn't seem comfortable with the turn of events, stealing glances at one another before looking back to the floor. Uh, what's going on? Um... No, if she's going to do something bad, you want to stop her. Admiring the merchandise. This little guy is absolutely adorable. What's your name, beautiful? Well, it ain't beautiful. Oh, he got jokes too. Clannis wrapped her arm around his waist and pulled him closer to her. He tried to mask his discomfort, but it was showing through his small frown all the same. Are you something special to Lady Zuna? You're obviously dolled up. But is that because she fancies you? Or is she advertising some high-paying clients? The poor thing's uncomfortable, Clannis. Are you really going to give him a hard time? Xay was half paying attention to the ordeal and focused primarily on drinking her wine. They're all uncomfortable, Velvet. Reality of the job. Area man fucks for a living. Bitches about it all the time, all the same. Legitimately surprised that wasn't in the brochure. So that's your idea of entertainment? Give servant boys a hard time? It'll be fine, seeing how we all ought to get used to bossing these men around. Don't you think it's a bit 
decisionist to believe you have somehow pulled this off without alienating every male here. Uh, I don't really like how this turned out. <laughs> I'm kind of, what? And what? Do you think that gives you a free pass for Clarence? I swear to Dodge, I will not. Yep, let's do that. One. Messed up. <laughs> too close. Whoa, I missed that. What? That went too fast. Ooh, look, that's cool. So it'll be fine seeing Clarence shoved Valmir away and walked up close to you. Too close. Ooh. Okay, so that started a fight. Sitting down would be no longer would no longer be an option. Then take your best shot. See where that route ends. The room went dead quiet as the two of you stared into each other's fierce eyes. Oh yeah, kick her ass. You had contemplated following through with the threat, but you remember the decision that got you here and decided to wait and see what she does first. It wasn't until everyone heard the boy bring himself back to his feet that attention shifted. Clannis took a brief, coarse breath and walked back towards him. You know what, White Knight? <clears throat> Clannis grabbed his waist even fiercer than before, only now her left hand under his chin, applying some of her zala as she tightened her grip and moved his head at will, ignoring the pained reaction from him. What the hell, Clannis? Hey, yeah. <laughs> I think she summed it up with that. Can't you hear him in pain? What the hell's wrong with you? I might be the only one here thinking with clarity, actually. If you all cared half as much as you think you do, you wouldn't be here. And I know I wouldn't be the only one getting acquainted with a fair amount of whores. When this fine establishment is mine, I won't have the option to protect them from the women all the time, so why even pretend otherwise? They have bouncers, you know. Pres presently. Okay, you need to let go before I make a scene you won't like. I will. As soon as the little rebel tells me his name. She turned her gaze back to the boy's strained glare. So what is it? Zara? Xvair? Or perhaps the reason we don't know is because you only remember your brothel title. Maid? Bed warmer? I mean, if it's a whore, just tell me- Oh. Dang. Before Clannis could grin over her inquiry, the boy slapped her right across her face with a lasting echo, only rivaled by the thud of Clannis hitting the ground near them. Good. It's Valamir, you bastard. Dang. Do it. You go, Valamir. But everyone went quiet. Clannis, who was rubbing her face, seemed shocked for reasons beyond the offense. You deserved it. You were being mean. You stole a few glances from the servants and realized they too were struck with surprise and fear. Valamir took a few steps back, but he was quick to notice Clannis was not looking at him at all. He turned his body in the direction of her gaze, and everyone followed along. Surely enough... The wrong woman just stepped into the room at the wrong time. Ah. Uh. Eh, do this. She really did. Damaging the merchandise and provoking him. She can walk it off. It's her own mess. Is it possible to let sleeping's ragoons lie? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, that was... That was something else.
Wow. Ending two of three? Wow. Let me tell you, that was amazing. There were so many choices. So many choices. <laughs> Rants about Stephanie Meyer's Twilight. Cool. Um, my thoughts on the game. Wow. So far, I really like it. I'm kind of, well, I'm not confused, but I kind of see, like, a patriarch thing going on between the, the females and the males, obviously. Um, it, it kind of confused me at first, I, and now I kind of get what's going on there. Uh, I think that whole scene in the, the kitchen or the, the dining room was really well done. And uh, I was really, I just wanted to smack Clannis, Clar that's her name? Myself. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of feel like these kinds of things I wouldn't be very good at because I'm, I just don't want anybody to get picked on. And I, I just, I can't do that. I can't see myself just being like walking away from a situation like that. I'd be like, hey, stop it, leave him alone. <laughs> so... I don't know, I think all the choices were really good. There was lots of choices, guys. I think you guys should really play the demo for yourself. This was amazing. The music was really good. The art was amazing. Um, I really enjoyed it. And there was voices, so that was even better. There was a couple of... Um, a couple of uh, the voice acting. I think there was like one or two girls that, that's mics were a bit muffled. But I, this is just a demo, of course I know, so the quality will, of course, go up. But um, that was just, like, one small gripe right there. But uh, other than that, wow, this was absolutely amazing. Um, on my own time, I'll try to get the other endings, but wow. You guys, check this out for yourself. All the links are in the description. Uh, this is amazing. <laughs> um... I still want to know what's what's going on with the, the world. I want to know more about the world. And, um, yeah, so I was totally on uh, Vladimir's side. Is that his name? <laughs> I was just like, slap her. It's going to kick her butt, too. All right. Well, I'm Bishi, and I'll see you next episode. And thank you guys so much. And Bishi out. Bye.